Hello everyone, my name is Derek. I'm the interpretive ranger here at Gerald Plantation State Historic Site. For those of you that don't know, Gerald Plantation was a cotton plantation that was founded here in the 1840s and run by three generations of the Gerald family. Behind me, you'll see the original cotton gin house they built here in 1895. Today, I wanna to take you inside and show you the original cotton gin and we're gonna talk about how it works and why it would have been so important for a large scale farming operation like this one to have a piece of equipment like that. So if you're ready, let's go inside and take a look. So here we are at the original cotton gin. This is a steam powered cotton gin, which is different than what the Gerald family would have been using in the 1840s and 1850s, which would most likely have been a horse powered gin. But in 1895, Benjamin Richard Gerald bought this steam powered gin to help industrialize the cotton processing operation out here at Gerald Plantation. Now this is a Franklin Loomis gin built in Juniper, Georgia, and it's made up of three distinct pieces. So you'll see a feeder on the top, the cotton gin is in the back, and then there's a condenser right here on the end. And if you look closely, you can see a hole in the floor here where the belts would come up from the steam engine to help run the machine. So let's get a little bit closer and talk about how the whole machine works. The Gerald family did use their gin as part of a commercial operation, so farmers in the area would have been bringing up baskets just like this full of cotton to be ginned. What are we talking about when we're talking about ginning cotton? Now I've got a bowl here. So once the cotton was picked, the next step before it was ready to be produced into something else would have been to remove all of the cotton seeds. So if you see here, doing it by hand would have been a very laborious process to pull out each one of these little cotton seeds. Now, inventions like Eli Whitney's hand crank cotton gin or the steam powered one we have here would have really helped expedite this process. So let's see what would have been next for this cotton after it had been picked from the field. So the first step after cotton enters the gin house, it's poured into the feeder at the top. The cotton will move along the conveyor belt and then down into the gin stand at the other end. And the purpose of the feeder is to control the rate at which cotton is entering the gin stand to prevent clogs. The cotton makes its way from the feeder here down into the cotton gin stand. The cotton lint then catches on the teeth of small saw blades and is pulled through holes too small for the seeds to fit through. The seeds then fall through the hole in the floor here and are collected below. The cotton lint then moves its way through, is fluffed, and then sent over into the condenser for the final part of the processing. So the final stage was the processed lint coming into the condenser. Now the condenser was important because it contained small screens that removed excess air from the processed fiber. This would have been hugely important because most cotton gins would have needed a large cotton lint room because of all the dust particles that would have been emitted during the process. But this condenser would have made it so that all of the dust and lint particles would have been vented outside and the finished product would come out from the end of the condenser in nice clean sheets that could be collected and then packaged for sale. So after cotton finished the ginning process, it was packed into a 500 pound bale like this one. Benjamin Richard Gerald and his sons had three ginning days a week, so farmers in the area could bring up their cotton to be ginned. Now it cost about $2 a bale to gin this much cotton, and the Gerald family continued to gin cotton out here until about 1920 and the introduction of the cotton boll weevil, which brought large scale cotton farming in this area to an end. So the importance of the Loomis cotton gin for the Gerald family was not only that it allowed them to gin more cotton for farmers in the community as part of their commercial business, but it also allowed them to gin their own cotton more quickly and more efficiently, freeing up the steam engine to run other equipment and allowing them to focus on other areas of their farming operation. Well folks, that's all I have for you today. I hope you had fun learning about the Gerald Plantation cotton gin. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.